I loved Sengatsu no Lion. It easily topped my list of the best anime of 2016, even with plenty of other good contenders. And with the second season coming this fall, it made me reflect on what exactly caused it to resonate so well with me. I think part of it is because Shika Umino and Shaft created a wholly relatable main character, partially by not fitting it into these all-too-common modern anime, light novel, and manga tropes of simplifying your characters down so people can project onto it easily. They managed to make this character complex, partially by giving him some truly tragic events that, while most audiences couldn't pretend to have been through, they can still manage to bypass this barrier and relate due to his temperament and the way that he reacts and acts with the situations around him, which most everyone has felt or seen on some sort of scale throughout their lives. You see this constant analysis of himself not to burden others, because he's seen how being around others can cause them to be dragged down, even if it's only questionably his fault which causes this struggle between himself where he wants people around him to live good lives and he does not want to cause others pain, but the realization that, in a sense, life is pain and that no matter what decision he makes, he will always be causing hurt to the ones around him. Ray is not intrinsically selfish or selfless. He's just trying to rationalize what he sees as the best way to have everyone live a happy life, and the solution he initially comes to, unfortunately, is to keep distancing himself so that there's no way that he can hurt or leech off of the people he loves. The drama in this show is perpetuated by the fact that as a professional shogi player, he is constantly hurting people's livelihoods just by playing, but since he needs to win these games to support himself, he's placed in a position to put others down by beating them. Considering shogi games often happen during school days and hours, getting good schooling in order to find a well-paying job outside of shogi is made near impossible, which perpetuates this loop. Something Ray doesn't seem to seriously consider, however, is that each person he competes against is also deciding to compete, which should put his competition on equal moral footing, but when someone he feels that he is wronged is constantly feeding in his ear just how much these people are suffering due to him, with her standing as some sort of living proof, Ray's temperament seems to believe that he is not as deserving of winning, or being somebody's choice, like the Kawamoto's. This, of course, only really represents what he is thinking through part of the show, as Ray doesn't have a consistent mindset through the series. He is always trying to work through what is going on around him, and what is going on around him is often changing in large but subtle ways. This aspect alone makes Ray seem like a living character in a real world more than any other show I saw in 2016. And Ray isn't even the only character like this in the show. A often looked at aspect is the supporting cast, specifically the Kawamoto sisters, and how I can only describe them as looking like the human equivalent to a breath of life. Conveniently, they fill this role perfectly for Ray. The show starts them off by introducing them with comic relief and lighthearted attitude, as well as some generally cute bits, in order to cement them as a force of good against the darker thoughts that Ray has in the show. But as Ray spends time with them, you see that they have just as much on their plate and are fighting just as hard to keep happy as well. This cracks through as early as the second episode with something that Ray catches Akari mumble, which is then extrapolated upon much further in the New Year's episode where Akari tells Ray that having for him not been there, she would have found it very difficult to stay calm and collected, mainly because of what memories the New Year's brings out of her. For a more casual viewer, the cracks begin to become extremely self-evident by the third episode where he comforts the middle sister who's putting on a happy face when she leaves the Kawamoto home just for Ray to find her wailing by the river. Most all the characters I have yet to mention are similarly fleshed out, with varying screen time and purpose. The most important thing is that they all seem like they have lives outside of the character, which is rare for many anime series to pull off with even two characters. He has a sickly mentor, a friend who really cares about him, a concerned stepfather, and plenty more on a long list of people who really want him to succeed, but he can't seem to reconcile the weight he feels he's placed on others due to the tragedy surrounding his family. He bobs between a sense of self-hate and self-pity that causes him to not only feel as if he's treading water, but walking while fully submerged. The tragedy in the story is from the genuine struggle that people have with themselves to move forward and to become better people. The characters, Ray especially, often analyzes himself and his place in the world, and how he will grow and contribute and eventually, hopefully, be happy. I am weeks away from being a sophomore in college. I feel the debt adding up. I keep switching minors in a feeble attempt to grasp what I want. I'm preparing myself for what will hopefully be a well-paying, but almost certainly will be a very boring desk job that I don't want. I feel trapped. I feel like in this way, I am Ray. Ray hates Shogi but it's all he's ever been good at, and all he's ever known how to do. It got him out of being left up for adoption, it got him to spend time with his father, it gave him money to live on, but it also made people hate him. It tore families apart when all he was trying to do was survive. 
And when I watched Kyoko show up at his apartment, I got genuine anxiety because it felt like a badly resolved ex was coming to see me uninvited. If you ever felt manipulated, if you ever hated yourself for what you had done but you couldn't think of any other way to resolve something, felt like you weren't smart enough to find a way out, felt like the burden of others or at the mercy of someone that you had hurt, you can relate to Ray. Depression is a trap. It takes all of your trophies and it stabs them into you. You can't do right, you can't do wrong, and doing nothing causes other people pain too. When Ray's in a tight spot, despite the weight that he feels, he pulls through. He doesn't go easy or give in to the world because he realizes something in his fairly famous outburst from the series. People have choice. He chose to avoid the orphanage by entering the Shogi family. He chose to win the matches he does in order to survive. What he finally comes to grips with in episode 11 is that other people have choice too. They choose not to fight hard enough, not to put in the work, or to give up, and just because they choose poorly doesn't mean Rei should bend to their sadness. But that also works for the positives too. The Kawamoto's house are only a kotatsu, only a beacon of warmth because they see the good in Rei and they want to help him and make him better. Any person you interact with has the same ability to deny interaction with you. If someone wants to give you something, if someone cares about you or sees in you what you don't, they are not wrong. Their time is not wasted on you. Because at the end of the day, the only people who can choose if their time matters or if their time is well spent are the people themselves. Hey guys, thank you so much for choosing to watch my video. If you enjoyed it and would like to support me, please feel free to subscribe or leave a like. And if you took any issue or have any suggestions for me, feel free to comment below. If you'd like to see another analysis video on Sengatsu no Lion and haven't already seen it for some reason, I would recommend the Pedantic Romantics Equally Sentimental video on having value. His video also talks about depression and has some points that kind of run parallel to mine. Hope to see you soon.